Yes. Hi guys. Thank you for coming back. And it's just a few minutes before kids are coming here, students. So today we'll talk again about kata, good and bad. I thought about a different aspect of why kata can be good and bad. But first I wanted to thank everybody who donated for Ukraine kids. I'm really proud. We collected almost $4,000 that we'll send to my friends in Ukraine that really need it. Uh, my friend Pucha, he hosts kids in his town and he need to feed them. Larissa in Kirovograd, she's hosting. And then also, of course, uh, those who's in Poland and in Czech, hosting people. So I would like to distribute this money to whoever needs it. Anyway, kata, good and bad. So look at the kata. If whatever kata I do, it's always very precise. It's always precise, right? Whatever technique I do, you know, it's going to be always exact. Bam! Should be it shouldn't vary, especially not when you learn the kata. Right? A knife and book will be always the same. Right? Hey, whatever technique I do, right? it's constantly the same. And we need this precision. Because it teaches me, the kata teaches me, as I see it, concepts of movement. It's develop the right patterns in my in my nerve system, and I'm not trying to use it exactly as is. It's a problem if you try to to do a down block in a in commit exactly like in a kata. I need to do a down block the same way every time when I do basics. I, of course, I still use the body differently if it's direct rotation if I step forward, reverse rotation, right? So, here's the same technique. I can use my body slightly different, but it, that kind of teach me to produce force to this direction, and then to this direction, maybe to here, and then to here, and then to Jordanski, Jordanski, right? Maybe Hagizuki, Stoke, Stoke, See, so I learned to, any direction, <laughs> produce force. Any direction, produce force. But, but if, for example, my IQ was sometimes here, sometimes there, sometimes there, it will be difficult to learn to produce force exactly to a specific direction. That's why, in the cut of my imagination and my technique, have to be matching. Maybe I imagine here, but I'm here. So, my picture of my own self-awareness is not developed enough. It has to be developed to the point that every movement I do is exactly what I think is exactly what I do. And then the body learns to produce force. Right? And they kind of teach me to move out of perfect posture, how to make power from the center, how to continuously any action start from the floor, continue to produce force, how to make smoothness between techniques, etc., etc. Many, many, many good concepts, even concept of combat. combat. You see in the kata many times, step in to back sense to block. Right? That's using application. Step in without committing my weight. Right? So, principle of combat as well. But I see too, too many people, and I used to do, before I came to San Diego, nobody told me that you don't fight like Kata. So, so I used to try to fight things to be exactly like in, in the Kata. I still see people try to punch from here. So, in reality, the same Gyakuzuki is never the same. Could be slight angle, could be up to down. 
could be many different angles. Yes. Could start from any place. Maybe some people like to fight with their hands down if they touch the footwork. They like to invite the opponent this way. Maybe the hands can be here. Maybe I like to give some opening, start from any place. Yes. Uh, the arm lock is going to be slightly different, depend on different opponents. Yeah. So, you have to understand that doing the kata, yes, you have to be precise because the concept is to learn, to learn the underlying principles of movement, not to learn them only here, but to internalize. But then, then you have to understand that in Kumite, the techniques are going to become flexible. So, you have to ask yourself in Kumite, not am I doing the same technique of the kata, as in a kata, but am I using the concepts? Am I, are my feet always ready? And is any time I start my technique, I start from the floor. Is any time something happen, I react with the feet. Right? Is any time something happen, feet make the choice. Feet make the choice. Are the feet catching the rhythm of the opponent, or am I looking? Which makes me behind. That's how we say eyes back. I see the posture is including a mental side. Low stomach forward. We say in the kata. Low stomach forward, you know, we kind of perceive my opponent. That's my antenna. Right? But if I get pressed and committed, the first tendency is the hips out. You start hesitating, overthinking. So, Everything that goes on in my committee, I go back and fix in a kata. But again, I don't fight as the kata externally, but I fight exactly as the kata teach, teach me, as far as principles. Okay, guys, hopefully this is useful, and I'll, I'll add to it a little more. But uh, yeah, maybe I'm going to add something. For example, take a sweeping block. Simple. Nagashiuke. Right? So Nagashiuke is going to be used differently. If I move back with the opponent technique, I might follow all the way. If I move in, my sweeping block will be a little shorter. So I have to adjust to the space and distance with the opponent. In other words, same technique is going to be used slightly different. Hi. Thank you.